Welcome to this video from Learn the Electrics. We are sometimes asked how to add a second consumer unit when the existing consumer unit has no spare ways. Some older boards have only four or six ways and they may all be occupied. And a lot of newer boards with 12 ways are often fully occupied also. But your customer has asked for a new shower circuit to be installed or maybe an electric cooker to replace the gas cooker. At other times, it may be a request to install a power and lighting circuit into the garage. So, what can we do? Let us suppose that this is the existing installation. This installation has an isolator switch in the circuit so that we can safely isolate correctly. We will look first at what we have. There is the intake position or service head where we will find the main cutout fuse. Check that the size of this fuse will safely carry the additional load on the installation. We have a meter to indicate power usage. Next we have an isolator switch. This allows us to safely isolate the installation without the need to remove the cutout fuse. We will also look at the installation without an isolator switch. And lastly, we have our existing consumer unit, the one that is fully loaded. So what does the customer want? They have asked you to install an extra circuit, but there are no spare ways in the existing board. The option that you have chosen is to install a second consumer unit to serve the new circuits. How are you to connect the new consumer unit into the existing circuit? The standard way to make these connections is to break into the existing wiring and install Henley blocks. These are nothing more than connector blocks for meter tails. Henley blocks will take the standard size meter tails of 16mm, 25mm and even 35mm. They come in a variety of styles. The basic Henley block will be one wire in and two out. In other words, it will double up the number of feeds available. But they can also be bought as one to three way, one to five way, etc. They are available as single modules, one Henley block for the phase conductor and a separate Henley block for the neutral conductor. They can be bought as a combined module with a connector block for phase and a connector block for neutral in the same plastic moulding. A Henley block is nothing more than a lump of heavy brass with the appropriate number of ways in it, all in a plastic housing. Here we are showing a three-way block. If we look at the edges of the block, we can see one conductor hole on one edge and holes for two conductors on the opposite edge. It is simply a case of one live feed in and two live feeds out, all securely connected into the block. The block of brass acts as nothing more than a pathway for current to flow. And a separate identical block for the neutral. Let's return to our earlier drawing. We want to split the supply and install a second consumer unit. For clarity, we have left the earth off these drawings. Both consumer units would also use the same main earth. We can use the isolator switch to isolate the installation whilst we are working. Do not forget to lock off and carry out the correct safe isolation procedure. After safe isolation, we would begin by installing the second consumer unit in the correct location and then remove the main tails from the first consumer unit. Now choose an appropriate location to locate the two Henley blocks, one for phase and one for neutral. Connect the main tails from the isolator to the Henley blocks. Now connect new meter tails from each Henley block into the first consumer unit and then meter tails from each Henley block into the second consumer unit. Finally, inspect, test 
and re-energize the circuits. The installation will require certification and the electrical installation certificate should be issued and the work should be notified to the local authority or to your scheme provider if you have registered with them. So that was with an isolator switch and it does simplify things. But what is the procedure if there is no isolator switch fitted? We can see on this drawing that the tails go directly from the meter to the consumer unit. This is typical in millions of houses across the UK. To carry out this work, we would now need to remove the main cutout fuse in order to isolate the installation. Now we may have a problem. Most supply companies insist that only operators employed by them are permitted to remove the cutout fuse. It is their property after all, even though it is in your customer's house. We should always check with the relevant DNO or distribution network operator to find out what their approved procedure is regarding the fuse. Most will insist that they, the DNO, visit site to remove the fuse and to isolate the installation. They will also want to return to refit it. There is a charge of course for this and the dates and times need to be scheduled in if your customer is not to be left without electricity for several days. One solution though is to arrange for just the installation of an isolator switch, nothing else. Yes, there is a charge for this also, but only one visit to site is required by the network operator and the customer will not be left without electricity. And if the installation of the isolator switch is arranged for a few days prior to your work, you will now have an isolator switch already installed. But we digress. Let's move on. We do not have an isolator switch and we have arranged for the main fuse to be removed. Even if the DNO has safely isolated the installation, you should still check yourself. It is going to be your hands that are handling and manipulating copper conductors. You need to make sure that you and your colleagues are safe. Now it is simply a case of following the same sequence as before. Remove the main tails from the original consumer unit, install the Henley blocks and wire them in. Then make the connections to the old and new consumer units. Finally, inspect and test the newly wired circuits, arrange for the fuse to be replaced and then certify and notify the completed installation. So let's have a recap on what we have done. Please remember that electricity is dangerous. Adding a consumer unit to an installation and extending the mains tails is a job for competent persons and those being taught and supervised by a competent electrician and they must understand the risks associated with electricity. Always follow safe working practices and always use the approved safe isolation procedures. Check the DNO's policies before removing any main cutout fuses. On completion, an electrical installation certificate is required to be completed and this work will be notifiable under Part P of the building regulations. Either notify the local authority building control or your Part P scheme provider, whichever is appropriate. And there we have it. We hope that you have enjoyed this tech tip video from Learn Electrics. If you click on the save button below, you can review this video later or by clicking on subscribe, you will have access to all of our videos. You can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar from any computer to gain access to all the videos too. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.